You've seen his face before, maybe hundreds of times, depending on how much you like ice cream. He's been with you in times of great joy, maybe consoled you after a breakup, making life a little bit better, one pint at a time. And there he is. Hello. The company Jerry Greenfield created with his childhood friend Ben Cohen helped define what a modern company could be. What do we want? Come and trust us. What do we want? Trust? Taking stands, often uncomfortably, ahead of or at odds with public opinion. There was a lot of criticism. There was a lot of skepticism, even from the inside of the company. I spoke to Jerry to find out how he built a global business without compromising his social conscience. You can be the most caring company in the world. You can use the most responsibly sourced ingredients. But if the ice cream doesn't taste great, it's all for naught. So there are so many places I, I thought about starting with you, Jerry. So let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. How much of the original ethos was like baked in, as it were, like right from the beginning? Like, what is it? What is the essence of it as you look back on those early days? Certainly, Ben and I are uh, products of our upbringing and our environment. We grew up in the 60s. I don't know that we were hardcore hippies per se, but we certainly believe in peace and love, not as a cliche, but that we're all in this together and our role as human beings is to help take care of each other. So when we started as a little homemade ice cream shop, our idea was to be a little corner store that would be a community gathering place. And we actually had no thoughts of being a business. We wanted the shop to be a reflection of who we were. And so when did you know it was a business? The first time it really seemed like a business uh, was when we built an ice cream factory. We started packaging ice cream only because we couldn't really make it as an ice cream shop. It was too cold in Vermont. So we built a real mechanized ice cream plant. And Ben and I were there one day watching these pint containers come out of the ice cream machine. And it was just pint after pint after pint and gallon after gallon after gallon. And we said, boy, somebody's eating a lot of ice cream out there. <laughs> uh, you know, that, that's kind of when it sunk in. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Jerry. You know, we may not have the money to go on TV for 30 seconds, but we sure do make some of the best ice cream you ever tasted. Talk to me about your relationship with him. You guys knew each other as kids. I have to say, you know, I've looked at a lot of partnerships over the course of my reporting career. There are very few that match up to, to this. Like, how do you explain that? Uh, I think we really, really appreciate and treasure our friendship, which is kind of at the bottom of everything. And so we have a very similar worldview and view of what we would like the business to be, starting with an anti-authoritarian bent, which is kind of the, the fundamental part of Ben. Uh, he's very countercultural. He's extremely creative. So it's pretty unusual stuff. That countercultural approach was baked in from the beginning and not especially methodical. The pair drew on a worldview that started as kids, was cultivated through their adolescence and early adulthood, and never really left them. When you talk about the, the social mission, it doesn't feel like you're doing a lot of market research about like, well, we should weigh in on this issue or we should weigh in on that issue, right? No, it's, uh, it's based on values. Things like environmental justice and fairness. We have no interest in bombing and killing and drone striking other people like us. 
and standing up for people whose voices are often not heard. And that's, you know, pretty different from a corporate approach. And do you think it it helped hurt or was neutral that you're you're selling ice cream through, throughout all of this? You're not a, you know, a big bad corporation. You're, you know, you're selling Chunky Monkey and Cherry Garcia. I think it really helped. Making ice cream is something that has allowed Ben and Jerry's to talk about pretty serious issues, uh, get involved in pretty serious issues, and combine it with ice cream. And it allows us to talk with people and connect with people about serious things in a pretty fun way. But in the end, it all comes down to the ice cream. And if the ice cream doesn't taste great, it's all for naught. So you still have to do all the other business stuff that an ice cream company does. You have to make great ice cream. You need to get it distributed. You need to make sure it's kept cold. So it, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes people think it's a magic bullet if you have a social conscience. And in a way, it makes things more complex. So, you know, th this notion of uh, exactly what you're talking about actually does lead me to, to this clip that, that I want you to watch. And it's from Chico Lager. Fred Lager, who goes by Chico, served as the general manager and later CEO of Ben & Jerry's back in the early 1980s. To be honest, I mean, there, there was this tension um, between um, the urge of the founders uh, to be more uh, social mission driven and the responsibility that uh, myself and my management team felt to make money, to make a profit, and to deliver a return to the shareholders. You know, you want to sell, you're selling ice cream, you're selling a fun product and everybody eats ice cream, but not everybody believes in the values that Ben and Jerry held. And the question is, do you want to alienate half the population that perhaps doesn't agree with everything that you're advocating for? In hindsight, uh, it worked uh, because uh, the people who were attracted to the business became fiercely loyal and uh, wanted to support the business more and more. And, um, you know, I have plenty of Republican friends and they still eat the ice cream because it tastes really, really good. But there was this tension. There's no denying it. Ben and Jerry and I are, are still very close and good friends. And, you know, all of us look back on it and go, you know, boy, you know, we all could have figured out a way to have done that in a much more amicable way and with a little less drama and wish that we had. But really good things emerged, you know, from that tension and uh, ultimately, I think, uh, resulted in uh, a business that was uh, both successful financially, but also succeeded on a product and social basis as well. You, you should just do your entire interview with Chico. <laughs> he Don't sort of think? summed a lot up there, didn't he? Uh, yeah, Chico's great. Yeah. So when you look back to, you know, like building the team and all of that, and, you know, it's not just the, the two of you very quickly, you, you sort of do have to draw consensus and you're walking these lines in many ways. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And I think there was this struggle. There was this, what are we going to be as a business? Are we going to be more of a traditional business, let's say, or are we going to try to do something different. And I think it's helpful to understand that back at that time, there really weren't a lot of businesses doing it. And there were no books about how to do it. And you didn't know where it was gonna take you. And the time that we were really trying to decide what are we gonna be, Ben essentially said, all right, we're doing it. And you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. And when you say you're on the bus, meaning we're going to be a company of purpose and mission, and that that's who we are, and we're either going to do it or die trying. Yeah, but, you know, the other amazing thing about Ben is I don't think he ever had any doubt that it was going to work. You know, Ben viewed this as an experiment. 
he didn't view it as, oh, we need to make a successful business. He viewed it as, let's see what we can do. Let's see what business can be. For Ben and Jerry, following their consciences hasn't just meant prioritizing a social mission, it's also meant repeatedly wading into some of the most controversial issues of the day. When you think of that sort of activism evolving, you know, and choosing specific issues, and and same-sex marriage, I think, is a really interesting one. Stepping out in, in that way required a certain amount of courage, especially when you're in charge of the livelihoods of lots of people. Yeah, the first time was the hardest, and that was back kind of in the early 90s during the Cold War. Ben and Jerry's came out with a product, a chocolate-covered ice cream bar on a stick, and decided to call it a Peace Pop. And on the packaging, it talked about redirecting 1% of the military budget out of weapons and into peace through understanding activities. And there was this fear that People were going to boycott us, that distributors wouldn't distribute the product, that supermarkets wouldn't carry the product. We were going to be seen as unpatriotic. But even people who didn't agree could respect the fact that the company was taking a position on an issue that was in the common good. But lofty ideals didn't seem to jive with the controversial decision by Ben & Jerry's to sell itself to multinational corporate giant Unilever in 2000. Both Ben and I did not want to sell the company. Ben, very, very strongly so. Ben, Ben would have done anything to not sell the company because any acquiring company would likely not passionately share the social values that Ben and Jerry's had. And it turns out we couldn't stop the sale because at the time Ben and Jerry's was a public company, which meant anybody could purchase shares. And in truth, the first several years after Ben and Jerry's was acquired, it wasn't great. I think Unilever didn't understand and appreciate the mission of the company. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago when there was a new CEO at Unilever and they put in a new CEO at Ben & Jerry's, that things really got better. Many of these issues of food security or employment or climate change cannot be managed by focusing on the quarter to quarter. You have to be sure that we value things that count. Paul Pullman had a genuine commitment to sustainability and the person at Ben & Jerry's, Yostein Solheim, really believed in the mission of the company, was a real risk taker. So when Ben and Jerry's was speaking out for same-sex marriage and when Ben and Jerry's publicly supported Occupy Wall Street, which was essentially an anti-corporate movement. And in 2015, when the company publicly supported Black Lives Matter, George Floyd! George Floyd! George Floyd! George Floyd! When George Floyd was killed in the summer of last year, Ben and Jerry's released a powerful statement calling for the end of white supremacy. It was startling in its specificity and clarity, especially as other companies chose much more cautious language. But being careful isn't the way the place is built, and this wasn't new ground. I think the company was able to speak out so strongly and so clearly because it had been doing the work for the last five years. It wasn't as if the George Floyd murder happened and the company said, well, we got to do something about it. The company publicly supported Black Lives Matter in 2015. It's done work in North Carolina around voter rights and voter suppression, working with the NAACP. The company two years ago came out with a flavor called Justice Remixed, which was around several issues, but one of them was about racial justice and criminal justice. And so that led up to 
the George Floyd murder and the company being able to say, we must dismantle white supremacy. And to Ben and me, one of the most wonderful things is that we had nothing to do with it. Uh, people probably don't realize Ben and I work at the company, but we're not involved in the management. We're kind of pretty faces, you know, we're Ben and Jerry. And we had no involvement in that, in that the company came out very strong and it was wonderful. And so as, as we wrap up, I, I want to talk about that because, you know, there are very few people, very few people who literally put their name on something that becomes a, a, a global brand. And I mean, what is the feeling of opening up a freezer or walking into a store and like, that's your name on a, on a, on a pint of ice cream. What does that feel like? Uh, I will say I don't connect that much when I open up a freezer door and, and look at a pint of Ben and Jerry's. When I think about the 43 years of Ben and Jerry's, I think about my, my friendship with Ben, doing some crazy adventures as part of the business, using its voice to speak out on issues that are controversial. And I think about how lucky I am. I try to explain this for people that, you know, being Jerry from Ben and Jerry's, whenever I meet anybody, they just automatically are warm and trusting and assume good things about me. And everybody ought to have the opportunity to go through life where people you meet are warm and trusting and friendly. It's, it's an amazing thing.